If you're not trying, are you even doing? Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode three of Rocky Mountain High. Rocky Mountain High. John Denver didn't look like he was wearing a cowboy hat per se, but I think I've found something that I think is gonna look pretty cool. <laughs> Can't believe I said John Denver and cool. <laughs> this is the series where Josh and I are building buggies. We're building them for the We RC Rock competition this coming June in Denver, Colorado, or just outside of Denver. And I'm not making jokes. Any, well, I am. I still make a lot of jokes. I make jokes all the time. Uh, but I'm not joking about these builds. I'm taking these quite seriously because I want to build. I love building. Building is the best. Building is best. There's t-shirts that I make that say that. Uh, and um, there's been so much progress on this F-Toy. I am totally in love with this truck and I'm really super excited to share all of the progress. The cage work and all of the brazing is done. All of my send, wait, where are they? All of my send cut send cardboard came in and this is the remnants. This is all that's left of what I got in two orders. Um, these are all the tabs. I made tabs. I felt kind of smart about this. I was like, I want to make a bunch of little tiny tabs. So rather than just make one, I made these little groups of them. And there's like four tabs per thingy. And they're just attached with a little tiny bit of metal there that was not cut off when the laser cut these out and then sent back to me. But I was like, these are going to come in handy. I'll use these all the time. Uh, these are 2.05 um, diameter holes which is what you need if you want to tap a two and a half millimeter hole. <laughs> I expect you to all make the jokes. But yes, all of those pieces, you can see there's lots of tabs here. I put tabs everywhere. Uh, these are mainly to hold panels on or to hold something in place. And they're all an M two and a half tapped threaded hole now. You can see I've already threaded. Let's just show you. See, look at this. Look at that smooth action. Brilliant. I tapped these myself. Ooh, it's brilliant. Um, I did use uh, some bits from Amazon that Josh recommended. And um, I also got a collet uh, to work with the DeWalt 8 volt gyro. Um, and this uh, just goes right in there. And then you add a little bit of this LubraCut, uh, which is really excellent stuff. It's like a um, beeswax based product, I think. Anyway, it's for tapping and drilling and it lubes up your hole nicely. <laughs> this episode is over. Uh, anyway, tapped all the holes um, and those are ready for panels. Now, panels. This is where I started doing some things I've never done before. And I owe all my credit to Steady Crafting with the Craftsman. Craftsman. I absolutely love Craftsman so much. He's the best. Um, but uh, yeah, I cut all my panels out of, what is this? One mil or less stainless steel. These are all stainless steel panels. Uh, there's the roof panel. Uh, and it's still got the masking tape template on it, so we know where things go. Um, this one has to be bent a whole bunch in order to make it work. Maybe even cut out a bit so you can see the motor. Um, and then we've got some side panels here. Those go on the side. They'll go on there like that. And I've got another side panel here for the driver's side. And then uh, I've got a bunch of panels for the hood. Here's one of them here, and this one's a little bit marred because this was a test piece. Because what I'm experimenting with, thanks to the craftsman, is chemical etching. And what I wanted to do for this is I wanted to keep it fairly consistent, just black and steel. That's all I wanted out of this, no color. But I wanted to add some texture and some detail and some patterns to the actual panels that are made for the body to cover up stuff. And chemical etching is a really interesting process. And I kind of learned about it 
through a few videos that I saw on YouTube, but the best tutorials I found were from the Craftsman, and I will put a link down below to those videos. Uh, because if you're interested in this process, he breaks it down in every single way possible. And I really should have listened to him more because I've been experimenting with other techniques that haven't been working as well. He recommends um, this sort of this blue paper uh, that you print onto, or it's like a thermal paper, I guess, and you print your designs onto that and it, it actually holds ink and then that gets ironed onto your metal and that creates uh, the resist. And the resist is where the acid etching, which is this stuff right here, ferric chloride, which is an acid. You do wanna wear gloves and um, eye protection and possibly even a mask, depending on where you're working with it, um, to actually chemically etch and burn into the metal. Uh, and then the resist is where your design stays and then you wash off the resist with some acetone and you finish with a cool looking design. And he, he's done an amazing job of describing all the different techniques. And I was like, that's nice. I'm gonna try my own thing. <laughs> Which obviously hasn't worked with much success. I'll show you some of the examples here in a second. Uh, but what I'm using is the Cricut to uh, cut out my designs. And I'm using this, this paper here. Well, it's not paper, but it's like an iron-on transfer material. And this iron-on transfer material is made for t-shirts. And it does bond pretty nicely to the metal, um, but I'm finding it difficult to find the right kind of temperature. Uh, the first time I did it, here's the first example of one of the panels here. And yes, it's a Duff Brewery's livery, because that's where this keg came from. Can't get enough of that wonderful duff. Uh, this is the first panel that I tried, and you can see it worked out pretty well. Uh, the pattern was fairly simple, just a bunch of like bullseyes with the duff logo in the middle, and it is etched, and you know, this duller part is where the acid has eaten away at the metal. Um, but the pattern wasn't applied with enough heat, and you can see that if you get real close, you can see that some of the areas that were really thin, or just a really thin line, or the edges, it kind of, kind of leached underneath the actual um, resist. So it didn't work out perfectly. I wasn't thrilled and I was like, I can do better. So I tried again and this time I applied way more heat with my iron to the actual um, resist, in this case, the iron on uh, transfer paper. And uh, what ended up happening was it ended up taking a whole bunch of the actual glue from the backing page or the, the um, adhesive from the backing and actually bonded it to the steel. So you can see where it was supposed to be a nice sharp crisp lightning bolt like right there, which those look great. Uh, these ones uh, look like blobs, lightning blobs, if you will. So that didn't really work out quite as well, but you can see I did more uh, etching and less resist and I think that's sort of the key to this whole thing, to really make those letters shine appropriately, uh, use more etching, less resist. Uh, anyway, so this was a fail as well, um, but we're gonna try again. Um, now, of course, because you're working with acids, uh, you do need to handle what's left over very carefully. Uh, like I said, eye, glove, some sort of mask, are all sort of key because you do not want to breathe in the fumes, you do not want to get this on your hands, and you do not want to get it in your eyes. Uh, so I follow all the safety precautions, um, but the best thing to do at the end, pour your remaining etching fluid or ferric chloride back into the container with a uh, silicone um, with a silicone funnel, and then I add some baking soda to help neutralize the acid, and then you can dispose of it a lot more safely. Um, but yes, so yes, all of these panels will have some sort of etched design on them. And I'm going to be using the same technique for the other truck. Uh, I'll be doing the same thing with a different metal. Now, you have to guess which kind of metal I'll be using. And do you think this is a worthwhile technique to be experimenting with so close to an event? Put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of those comments as I can. I am enjoying this a lot though because I really like experimenting and I like learning new things. While this isn't perfect, 
uh, mainly because I couldn't get all the adhesive off and the blobs. I think I think the next one's gonna work out fine though. Um, I may end up actually trying another technique because <laughs> uh, uh, apparently you can use laser printer toner, just black printer toner, uh, and that can work as a resist, provided you print it onto a glossy paper and then iron it onto your metal. That might be something worth trying as well. So we're gonna give that a go as well. Um, but yeah, as you can see, everything from Send Cut Send is now on here. The truck is one piece. It's bolted on there really good. I was like, I'm gonna weld it to that. And then I was like, hold on a second. Don't weld it on there yet. <laughs> Cause you may need to get in there at some point. So yeah. Um, I don't even remember what stage we were at last week, but it certainly didn't have a front grill brazed on there. It didn't have all these tabs brazed on there. And it certainly didn't have this whole rear section all brazed on there and done either. Man, I'm so chuffed with how this thing is coming along. I think it looks fantastic. I'm really excited about this one. And I did get a lot of uh, comments about how tall the tires were and how that wasn't very scale. Well, I don't care. I'm trying to etch as much performance into this one as I can. Interior, uh, still in the works, still uh, very much a digital file at this point, but I am planning on having a lot more of that done for next week's episode. Work is busy, but that's good too. All right, uh, have we done anything to that one? Let's go see. If I'm honest, I haven't done anything. Um, Josh has been sick, so there hasn't been a lot of progress on this, mostly because he's responsible for all of that stuff. Um, I did get another servo, that showed up. There it is. Um, I have a ESC on the way. I have my motor, which is going to be this cute little Holmes revolver uh, V2, uh, which is small but mighty. Uh, that's going to be uh, that's going to be partnered up to a Silent Assassins ESC, which I've already had programmed for that motor. Um, uh, somebody asked me if I was going to paint the brass servos and so far as i can read in the rules i don't think a servo counts as something that has to be painted uh, the brass hangers or the brass weights uh, the brass weights on the knuckles for the portal those will definitely have to be painted um, but um, yes uh, we'll get to that along with about a billion other things i uh, can't say i'm not nervous about this one there's so much more to do um, i don't have the tires I have the tires. I don't have the foams. I don't have the foams yet. So um, there's no point in really showing you anything here. Nothing has changed. I actually, I should probably print that second motor so I can get uh, Josh's back to him in time. Because we're approaching 30 days before this event starts. God, that's hard to believe. That's frightening, actually. Okay, well, um, so much more to do, but so many things learned it's learned, son. Learned. But yeah, uh, lots more to come, too. So I hope you will stick around for the rest of this series. I figure there's going to be at least four more episodes. Um, yeah. If you've got a question about anything you've seen today or you want more information on chemical etching, definitely go follow that link to the craftsman. He will give you all the information you need. He is a lovely human being. I wish we could all be like that. All right, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next week. There's a nine. I don't even know if that's correct or not. I lost count ages ago.